Good afternoon. Thank you for joining our QCDR webinar series. Today's topic is the 2017 MIPS submission wrap-up. By now, we hope that a majority of the participants on today's webinar are interested in using our qualified clinical data registry to meet or satisfy your MIPS reporting needs. This is our 10th webinar in this series. We begin this series back in April of 2017, um, and we will continue this series all the way through March of 2018 when we wrap up the submission deadline. Um, today's webinar is being recorded, and presentation slides will be sent along with uh, the recording to all anyone who has registered or who is attending today's session. My name is Alicia Blakey. I'm an administrator here in Quality uh, Management Programs, and you all, or most of you, should be familiar with my voice. As a reminder, today we do want you to remain engaged in our, our, our session today, so we would like you, if you have questions throughout today's presentation, to use the question box on the right-hand side of your screen. Submit your questions frequently as they come up, and staff is here to assist me while I give the presentation. And at the conclusion of today's talk, we will have a brief question and answer session. Any questions that are not answered today will be answered following today's presentation. So what we will cover, an overview of the QCDR process, key dates and milestones, data submission tips, and resources to maximize your participation. Here's just a gentle reminder for anyone who's joining us for the first time. Uh, the National Radiology Data Registries is how we um, uh, support radiology groups and individual clinicians to satisfy MIPS requirements. We do have six clinical data registries, and each of these quality data registries has quality measures that can be used for MIPS reporting. Um, and I am excited to announce that we have officially been approved by CMS to be a qualified clinical data registry for the 2018 MIPS reporting year. So today's content will focus on 2017 um, performance requirements, and then we do ask that you continue to submit your data, and we'll be here to provide you a service for 2018 reporting. Just as a reminder, if I go through throughout today's presentation, you will see um, hyperlinks and resources that are meant to help or guide you along the process after today's presentation if you do have questions. A majority of our content is saved at acr.org slash qcdr, and that's short for Qualified Clinical Data Registry. So in the beginning, it's important that we talk about using our National Radiology Data Registries as a, as a QCDR for MIPS reporting. In general, I won't bore you with the details, but you do have the content available here on your slides. But we do support clinicians and group practices to collect your MIPS um, performance data, whether it be for quality, improvement activities, or advancing care information. We, um, our goal is for you to monitor your performance to, through the data registries throughout the performance period, which was from January 1st of 2017 through March of 2018. And then the ultimate goal of the reason why you're joining today's conference and partnering with the ACR is so that we can report your quality data to CMS on behalf of your group um, so that you may avoid a negative payment adjustment for not participating in the MIPS program or to potentially earn an incentive which was not available under the traditional PQRS and value modifier programs. As a reminder, you are submitting data to, through the ACR registry um, as a gentle reminder that as a registry, we do collect information on Medicare and non-Medicare patients, so it is a requirement, um, at least to satisfy data completeness, that you do give us patient information for all patients, regardless of payer. Here's a high-level um, QCDR process. I've shared this background information on a majority of our webinars just to set the context and the structure. Um, I would say this is a is a five-step process, and this year in the reporting cycle, um, January through February, most of our participants or are on step four and step five, where you're actually trying to submit your measure data to one of our six data registries, or you're submitting your MIPS quality data um, through our MIPS participation portal. And then lastly, we need you to monitor your performance because at the end of your data collection process, you are going to have the ability to select quality measures 
improvement activities, um, and anything else required for MIPS requirements for CMS submission. We will spend some time throughout this presentation talking through deadlines and then also some key milestones to help you meet the CMS submission deadline. So one of the primary key benefits of using the registry is our ongoing uh, feedback reports that we do provide. As a QCDR, we provide you um, quality feedback reports at least four times a year. Um, and then we also have, um, so I made sure to um, draw attention to the quarterly report schedule. So for Q4, um, you can expect that Q4 reports will be issued in February, and that will include all, all, of, all of your exam information from January through December. So February is when you can expect your Q4 reports. Reporting is not, the, we also find that as a registry, it's very important to give you feedback, not only on a quarterly schedule, but we do have um, an interface so that you can actually receive your feedback reports. Um, you can download them. If you have non mips quality measures, you can download them from our NRDR interface um, by selecting your registry, and then these um, reports are available at the physician and facility levels. And then for your MIPS quality measures, feedback is available as data is provided through our MIPS portal. So as you submit your data files through the MIPS portal, we turn around your performance data within 24 hours. So do keep that in mind. We do have a quarterly report um, cycle, but you can access the MIPS portal at any time to view MIPS quality measures and non-MIPS quality measure data. So it's important today's um, webinar is, is meant to focus more on helping you wrap up the 2017 reporting cycle, and hopefully you can switch and start focusing on 2018 in a few in a few weeks. So some of our key dates and milestones that I've presented here for you, I won't read them off to you, but some key dates is that by January 31st, we are expecting all of our current registry participants to have submitted all of your data, whether it be quality data or selecting your improvement activities through our registry by January 31st of 2018. So that is a, a very um, good deadline to keep in mind as you're wrapping up uh, your 2017 information. Go ahead. You do need to give us everything by January 31st. I'll call attention also to the February 28th deadline. This is when, after you submit your data, that is not the end of the process. We will have a process for you to select your best quality measures and also your improvement activities so that we can um, package everything nicely so that you can submit to CMS. And then I would say that after you're selecting your measures and your improvement activities, March 16th, this deadline is very important. After you select your activities, we know that you may have changes to your performance data. You may want to give us additional information. We're asking that you give us everything by February 28th. So that's the end of February, so that by March 16th of 2018, we hope that um, you have a clear picture of your performance and you're able to select your best measures that are going to help you maximize your mid final score. After you select your measures, you are going to need to complete one final attestation, just attesting to the accuracy of the data submitted for your group, for your physicians. And we actually do not submit any data to CMS without that completed attestation. So do keep in mind that the March 16th deadline is very important. And then March 31st is the last day that, C that ACR will actually submit data to CMS. That's a a submission deadline that is for all registry participants and claim submitters. So we do um, we do plan to start submitting data well before March 31st. Um, so do keep that in mind. All of this information is available in our NRDR help desk, and also I call it our solution center. So you will see a light bulb here that's a key resource that can be downloadable and you can share with your team. Another key resource, um, we do understand that as a QCDR, ACR has been a QCDR since uh, the PQRS 2014 performance year, so we understand that we do have some people who have used us for multiple years. 
But in the same, at the same time, we do have first-time reporters and a lot of sites who are trying to figure out if they want to use a QCDR or a registry to satisfy their MIPS requirements. So we do outline the entire full process with um, key dates and deadlines, as well as um, any resources or necessary actions that you need to take in order to um, satisfy your data submission um, criteria and then also that we submitted to CMS. So I would say a key date to highlight from the QCDR participation checklist is this um, the dates between January 31st and March 28th. We do expect that you will um, start selecting your quality measures for CMS submission. Um, right now a lot of sites are focused on giving us the data, but in February is when you really will start selecting your measures. Lightbub is here again for a key resource. This can be downloaded from our NRDR Help Desk or Solutions Center. Just give me a minute, just making sure that there wasn't anything else that I wanted to. And just a reminder that this participation checklist is for first time users of our um, clinical data registries and also for returning users, there are certain things that you need to do annually even if your account is set up properly for a previous um, performance period. So do keep that in mind. So I think it's important that we spend some time looking at how our account is, uh, how the QCDR process is most effective or how you can make the most of using this process. One, everything is driven by our, your NRGR account, so it is important that your registration and your account is set up properly in our NRGR interface. You must have the MIPS registry on your account. All physicians must be enrolled in MIPS. And then for all of your, um, and I covered this kind of quickly, I went over it, but you need to give us information on your physicians as well as your tax ID information because this is a CMS quality program and that's how they're going to attribute any payment adjustments, looking at your physician's MPI and tax ID information. So it is a requirement for MIPS supporters that all of your 10 information and registries must be assigned to each physician account. So we do need valid MPIs. Uh, we need to know which registries you're intending to use for MIPS supporting and your tax ID information. Everyone can check the status of if your account is set up properly by navigating to the Manage Physicians tab inside of NRDR, and then here you will see uh, information on your physicians as well as the registries and TENs that are assigned. If you, I've highlighted this column because if you see any discrepancies, if you're submitting data, you're not able to see quality measures, um, the, the primary trigger is that your registries and TEN information is not linked properly. So we want to make sure that if you log into your account as a facility administrator, registry administrator, your user role does not matter. You want to make sure that you have all of your registries listed as well as your tax ID information. And additionally, you want to make sure that all of your physicians have yes next to enroll in this. Sorry, it's tab too, too closely. So this information can be checked on your own. We've sent some blast communication to our NRDR registry participants trying to troubleshoot some of the data submission errors, we found a lot of them can be fixed by um, actually making sure this page is updated. If you are finding that your information is not here, we ask that you do download our managed physician template, apologies for not highlighting it, um, and then you can update your information easily for all of your physicians. So now, um, I think it's important now that we looked at your account registration, some key tips to make sure that you are not, um, you're not missing any viable information that you expect to see from the NRDR. Make sure you check your account setup and make sure that we have valid information for all of your physicians as well as your tax ID information. So majority, as I mentioned earlier, a majority of our registry participants are now submitting data. Hopefully you've been submitting data for longer than um, longer than a month or a week. We, we hope that you would have started this process about summer time frame, um, September at the latest. So we ask that um, this is just an overview slide for anyone who's unfamiliar with the quality measures and, and what our service offers. 
QCDR participants can submit data to the ACR for both MITS and non-MITS quality measures for successful um, participation. You may also at this time select your activities um, for the improvement activities category um, so that you'll be ready to adhere to the January 31st submission deadline. So if a light bulb is going off in your, in your head and you're wondering what are the MIPS quality measures or what are non-MIPS quality measures, all of our previous webinars have been recorded and so you can always um, go back to them. But then I've also included hyperlinks so that you can understand what measures we offer and so that you can go ahead and start your data submission process. You cannot submit data without knowing which type of quality measures you're targeting for the performance period. I will also give a shameless plug that I thought that this was um, a normal understanding, but there are different data submission requirements if you are reporting MIPS quality measures or non-MIPS quality measures. And to satisfy your quality performance category, you can use a combination of MIPS or non-MIPS measures, or you can just use um, MIPS performance measures, but understand which type of quality measures you're trying to submit data for so that you can satisfy the data requirements. I think it's important that and, and that we, now that we look at the data submission and there are different requirements, it's important to cover some of the data submission tips that I've shared on previous webinars. I'll try to piece them out by um, MIPS data submission versus non-MIPS quality measure data submission. I would say I'm going to focus on MIPS quality measures first. Some key things here that I want to just point out is that your physicians must be registered for the MIPS portal in order to submit any data or view any quality performance data in our in our DR system. This is a business rule. We understand that some people have had problems registering their physicians. Without your physicians being registered, you will not be able to see any quality data. That's for MIPS measures or non-MIPS measures. So you want to make sure your physicians are registered. We do offer, if you do find that your physicians are not registered or you are unsure, we ask that you submit a support ticket to our NRDR help desk. There are also, to help you with the data submission process, there are documents out there on our web as well as and through our NRDR help desk on file specifications, our templates. We do ask that you use our ACR file specifications for submitting your MIPS data files. I've had some inquiries that people are using AMA files, they're using other files from different associations, we do ask that you stick with the ACR developed templates and file specifications. Um, there are, and then I won't read all of this to you, but there are some common MIPS data file errors that we've come across by, um, through our support ticket or phone calls, we, we learn from you all as you reach out to us. So we put together a resource to help you try to avoid some of those common data errors like incorrect file names, submitting too many records um, through the, the MIPS portal or to the ACR. We do have file size limitations and those are noted here for you on your screen. And then just as a reminder that as you're submitting data to us, someone at your site does need to verify the accuracy of that data and we do want you to um, be aware that you want to monitor your performance because in February and March you're going to need to start selecting your measures. So that's just another plug on the timeline reminder. I talked a little bit about the MIPS data file specifications. It is a core document that answers all of your questions about um, file name conventions, what are the data elements, what are the requirements, what fields are required and what fields are optional. Um, there is resources available for you. Um, we accept file formats in two, two formats, files in, via two formats, an Excel file or a text file. We do have specifications broken out for each. This is just an example of some screenshots of um, how we ask you to name your file, as well as all of the required data elements. So you are going to need things like exam date and time. You're going to need your patient's information. And then I would say um, columns I through M of your Excel spreadsheet is very important. That's going to tell us which measure it is, which procedure code you're billing Medicare for, 
your denominator, your numerator codes. That's it's very important that you give us that information. A lot of that is required. So do make note of your file specifications that are available to you. Um, this if this document is published, and we do update it frequently. Not frequently, but we there may have been some updates since the last time. You, if you are a person who has printed this document, I think we had some recent updates in December. So do be sure that you're looking at the most recent version. And then apologies if I'm going quickly. I just want to make sure that, or if this is too basic for some people who have been submitting your files and you've been working with the ACR, we appreciate you, but there is still some confusion among some users, so we want to make sure that we give um, timely and relevant information. Uh, I think it's important that we look at a few common errors that we're finding with the MIPS data files. This first bullet, physicians are not registered for the MIPS portal. When you submit an Excel file through our MIPS portal, um, this is a common error that people are getting. The physician MPI is not yet attested or not registered. We do need you to complete that portal registration in order for your, uh, what happens is if you see this error message, it'll be next to every exam that you submitted for that physician. So we've had some people have all 10,000 of their records rejected. Um, because of this error. So do make sure that your physicians are registered in the portal. If they are not, we can go ahead and submit a support ticket and we can go ahead and get that taken care of for you on the back end since it's so late in the submission process. We're, we're going to go ahead and help some groups that may have large number of physicians that are not registered. Um, Familiarity with, I talked about the data upload file specifications, but it's important that as registry users or as um, facility administrators managing this entire QCR process, it's important that you are aware of the 2017 code changes in all of the reporting requirements um, related to the quality measures that you want to report. So on your screen, you'll see information. This is a measures, our MIPS, a screenshot of our MIPS measures list. These are all the commonly reported measures for a diagnostic radiologist. And so it, all of the hyperlinks within this document will take you to a detailed specifications that are developed by the government telling you how to report the quality measure, what procedure codes you should be billing Medicare for, and then definitely to help with um, looking at performance on a quality measure, there are specific codes that you have to have as part of your MIPS Excel files or your text files, you do need that coding information so that we can know, uh, so that we can report that information to CMS for you. So do keep that in mind that to download the latest 2017 measure specifications, um, some common errors from the MIPS uh, article that I wrote up, there are a lot of errors pertaining to in incorrect or invalid CPT codes and then also diagnosis codes. Um, every quality measure does not require a diagnosis code, so you want to remove that information, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But do understand that every, all of the business rules that we have built into our Excel templates and our text files comes from the actual quality measure requirements, so keep that in mind. Um, these are not ACR-defined rules. A little bit, I just want to spend a little quick, quick, two seconds on when you're submitting your MIPS data files, there are some quality measures. Um, there are a lot of quality measures. We support about 70 plus quality measures when we look at the non-MIPS quality measures and the MIPS quality measures together. So it's important to know uh, for the MIPS measures, they are code driven. So we do need to know your procedure codes and we need to definitely know your numerator response values. So I would say um, this is just an example of, uh, of a document that we put together. It's called our 2017 MIPS Measures Code List. For every quality measure, you can see appropriate CPT codes, numerator responses, and diagnosis codes. It's a light bulb here because this is also a document that can be downloaded um, and shared with your team or saved to your computer so that you have the latest code. So if I were to code a MIPS, um, if I am trying to complete a MIT Excel file for upload to the ACR registry, out in in this example, we're using Measure 195, the stenosis measurement carotid imaging report. 
an appropriate response in the CPT column would be uh, code 36221. If you have a code 36222, two, three, or four, that is an appropriate code. So this is just an, a list. This is a, snap, a snippet from our full measure code list to show you that we tell you for every MIPS measure what all of the codes are. If you are trying to report a code that is not on this list, it will be rejected and you will get an error message. Another important, um, along with the CPT codes, because most coders are sophisticated with that, is that we do need you, the numerator response value, it is a required field. You cannot skip this field in our Excel document. It actually tells us if the clinical action was taken or not and then we actually use this, this information to calculate a performance rate for each of your quality measures. So for measure 195, an appropriate response in the numerator column would be 3100F. That's saying that your imaging report is satisfying the clinical action. If you have a 3100F slash 8P, that means that you are not meeting performance for that measure. When you're giving us your data we, for data completeness, we do want to know cases where you are successfully meeting performance and also not meeting performance so that we can calculate a valid performance rate for you. So this is just a, a reminder that if you're having MIPS data submission errors related to coding or um, also related to your physicians being registered, there are resources that you can download to help you troubleshoot or navigate those errors. Another error that has come up, um, frequently asked questions if you, if you may think of it that way, is that there are, a, for the 2017 program, there is a list of measures that require multiple CBT codes. So this first screenshot, and apologies my transitions, I didn't set them up properly, but this first screenshot right here is pulling directly from our MIPS specifications document. So there is a fill for a CPT code, and we actually, um, a good resource is looking at our 2017 code list. And then it's very important that not every quality measure requires multiple CPT codes. So we do explain to you which quality measures. So for this particular example, um, 102, 104, 405, and 406 are, are quality measures that require multiple CPT codes and we give you examples of how you should code this information in your MIPS data file. For anyone who's just joined the webinar, we are talking about common, commonly reported errors related to your MIPS data submission. So appropriate response for measure 406 um, for a CPT and numerator responses are here on your screen. If you are missing any of these codes, so from the billing company, a lot of the billing services or your risk system has code 70490. You also have to add G code G9552 in order for that record to be successfully submitted through our portal. So it is important that um, you understand which measures require multiple CPT codes and that you code it appropriately in your MIPS data file. I spend a lot of time on the MIPS quality measures because that's where a majority of the inquiries come from. As you, if you have additional questions um, on error messages that I have not covered, go ahead and submit them through the question chat and we'll try to answer them at the end. Uh, we're, we are going to shift focus just quickly on our data submission tips for non-MIPS quality measures. I won't, I've um, shared this resource previous in previous webinars. For I just want to highlight that for the grid registry, we do require exam level data. So if you're submitting that data monthly using facility forms, you will need to um, make sure that you're giving, you resubmit that data using, at the exam level. It is required for MIPS reporting. Um, and then another highlight is that the lung cancer screening registry and the national mammography data registry or database they do require two years worth of quality data in order for you to satisfy the MIPS requirements. So we're looking at, we will need to look at your screening exam information from 2016. And then the way the measures are written is that we have to have 12 month follow-up data to go along with those measures. I was on the phone call with someone today. They were interested in um, reporting NMD measures 
for 2017 reporting, they have not started submitting any data to the NMD registry as of today. I would recommend that they um, reconsider that registry for 2018 reporting because that would be a lot of exam information that they have to collect in a short period of time. We do have the January 31st deadline um, that's coming up for data submission. So that's hopefully in, um, of course, we do have resources. As the light bulb is here again. There is resources on our MIPS data submission process. When I say MIPS, that is MIPS is the program, but you do have um, quality measures for MIPS and non-MIPS. They're categorized very differently and require different data. So please do keep um, be mindful of those unique requirements for non-MIPS quality measures. So all of this information, any performance data that you submit to us, uh, right now focus heavily on quality measures, but you do also need to give us improvement activities. You will submit that information through our MIPS portal. Our MIPS portal is the central location where you can see any data that has been assigned to your group or to any physicians in your group. You can see what quality measures are available to them. You can see things like performance rates and reporting rates. So I do um, want to make sure that everyone is taking advantage of the QCDR process. You will need to navigate, access the MIPS participation portal. This is the central location where you can see um, all of your MIPS measures, any non-MIPS measures, and improvement activities. So do make use of the performance report. Um, there is a helpful guide that we put together on understanding how things like how we calculate the performance rate and how we would calculate your reporting rate or data completeness. So do make use of those resources. Um, and then right now this screenshot is a snap is a snapshot of measure 145. This is a this is not a real facilities information, but just for display purposes, you can see that their performance rate is very high for this measure. So I would anticipate that when we get to February, this group will be selecting measure 145 as one of their quality measures to satisfy MIPS. Um, this information, we will be enhancing our MIPS portal uh, in, a, in a few weeks for those um, who use the portal frequently do know that we will be giving you benchmark information and decile information um, that is available at CMS level. And then also we have some registry level benchmarks that we're also going to be providing for you. It's important that as you select your quality measures, you do need to look at performance data um, because that's going to help you maximize your MIPS final score. So just keep that in mind. Um, today's presentation is not focused on scoring in any way, but that's the ultimate goal. Um, so here is just a list of some enhancements that we that we are anticipating for the MIPS portal. Um, when I say coming soon, I will say February, March timeframe. There's going to be a new CMS submission tab in your portal that's going to help you select your measures. Um, we are going to be enhancing our performance reports tab so that you do have information um, your performance matched against CMS benchmarks in the ACR registry level benchmarks so that we can give you a sense of how you scored in comparison to your peers and if that's a measure you want to report to CMS. Um, as a reminder, I didn't say this already, but any quality measure that you submit to our registry, you are not required to submit that to CMS. You pick and choose or select the quality measures and improvement activities that you would like to report to CMS. By any means, we do not submit all of your data unless you attest and select everything. Um, a few other changes is that there's going to be a process for you to select your performance period. In previous webinars, we've talked about uh, the flexibility of the MIPS program, being that it's the first year um, that the program is transitioning from PQRS to MIPS. So you can decide if you're going to be reporting for the full year or if you want to only report your quality data and improvement activities for 90 days. If you are using the QCDR, we do ask for a 90-day purpose for as a 90-day reporter. We do uh, we have limited your your data to Q4. So if you are a 90-day reporter, um, you will only be able to submit us exam information from October through December. You will only be able not to submit. Sorry, you will only be able to select um, 
data for a 90-day period, October through December. So if you're using our registries, you can be participating for a full year. That means January 1st through December 31st of 2017. Or you can decide that you weren't ready for the full year and you just want to be a 90-day reporter. If you are a 90-day reporter, I'm just going to reiterate that it is limited to Q4 data. You'll have abilities to change your Pro status. Um, another performance category is the advancing care information. A majority of our radiology members are exempt from this category, but if you are required to participate in this category, we will have an opportunity or a tab inside the MIPS portal for you to select ACI measures specific to your group or to your individual um, doctor. Keep that in mind. And then attestation. Attestation is required for all measures and activities before we submit any data to CMS. If we have all your data and your attestation is not complete, we will not submit your information to CMS. And vice versa, if you have your attestation complete and no quality data, we will message you to let you know that you still need to um, select information before we can submit to CMS. So we will try to present your data in the best light to CMS, and we will not do that without your approval. Slowly coming up, I think I only have about two more slides that are content, and then we'll be opening it up for question and answer um, in a few minutes. So the ultimate goal of using the QCDR, we are collecting your performance data. We're giving you real-time feedback, and we're allowing you to pick and choose what data best represents your group. So if a quality measure does not match the practice patterns of your physician by any means, you're not required to submit us data on that measure. The goal is to maximize your MIPS final score. At this point, the most helpful resource to um, view your performance data is viewing the MIPS portal, and there's specifically a tab called Performance Report. Apologies, I didn't bold that. Um, so, and then in this MIPS portal, like we saw on the screenshot for Measure 145, you can export those results to Excel and then it can be shared with your team. So, do go in there, navigate the MIPS portal to see what quality measures have been attributed to your group thus far. If you have any discrepancies, missing quality measures, you need to contact our NRD or help desk so that we may troubleshoot accordingly. Uh, another reminder to select your quality measures that are based on your performance results. It is important that each quality measure for scoring purposes will earn anywhere from three to ten um, points based on our C either a CMS benchmark or an ACR developed benchmark. So you want to maximize your score for quality. You want to make sure that you choose high performing measures and the amount of points that are available for the quality category is 60 points. And then for improvement activities, um, that's another performance category. I would say out of, there's four performance categories. Your max, the, the two that you want to focus on to maximize your MIPS score is your quality and your improvement activities. Each activity earns anywhere from 20 to 40 points. So you're, between quality and improvement activity alone, you're looking at 100 points available. The MIPS final score is maxed out at 100. So, um, you want to try to go ahead and maximize your final score. You want to focus on those two categories. There are bonus points, as a reminder, there are bonus points available for reporting any additional outcome measures. Um, and then also if you report a lot of high priority measures. So for outcome, I mean, for the quality category, you can report an outcome or a high priority measure. You're only required to do one. If you do anything above one, there is some potential for you to earn bonus points. Um, sorry if I'm talking fast, I just want to make sure that we leave time for a question and answer. An important thing to note is that 2017 is the first year for MIPS reporting, so the performance threshold is very low, three points. If you earn at least three points, um, all of your doctors will avoid a negative payment adjustment for not participating, and you will receive a neutral payment adjustment, meaning you will not be incentivized or penalized for participating in the MIPS program, as long as you have three points. And then there is a bonus available for what CMS calls exceptional performances. If your score is creeping up to that 100% that 100 point threshold, if you score anywhere from 70 points or above, you could potentially get an, an additional incentive. So unlike with PQRS and the value modifier, which came prior to MIPS, 
um, there was no incentive. You were simply just trying to avoid a penalty. The more data that you submit now, you could actually potentially earn an incentive. So I know I covered a lot in today's talk, but just a quick summary, continue to submit your data for your quality measures and select your improvement activities through the MIPS portal. Do that by January 31st. The MIPS portal will be enhanced in February to allow for a selection of measures and activities for CMS submission. Um, navigate your MIPS portal and also our aggregate feedback reports. If your portal is not reflecting your measure information, a good backup is to um, backup plan to see your performance data is by downloading your aggregate feedback reports. Um, currently, we have Q3 data is the most recent report that's available to you. Q4 reports will be available in February. So you, so you might wonder, that's the reason why we have deadlines is so that we want to make sure we have all your data in by the end of January. So then in February, you can start selecting your measures. But we don't want you selecting measures if you don't have performance data. And then finally, there is the attestation process that is required before any data is submitted to CMS. We will start submitting data early March if the people are having all of their data selected and attested for. If I cover um, throughout this presentation, I tried to link resources. Every everything has been documented extensively, and our documents do um, change as we find bugs or fixing any errors that come through our support desk. So we are updating our files on it, on an ongoing basis. Some of our core documents, and this is the list that you can get to, are your MIPS quality measures, your non-MIPS quality measures. Those links to things like our MIPS measures code list, our data file specifications, there are FAQs, and then the most important resource that is not getting a lot of use or a lot of downloads is our QCDR checklist. I do ask that you download that QCDR checklist. It will help you ask the right questions and we can get the appropriate staff to respond in a timely manner. Uh, just a little reminder on Save the Dates, we have some upcoming events in February and March. We will be doing a QCDR support office hour, so it will be in a webinar platform like this. Um, and then it's just going to be all question and answer. I tend to talk a lot, so I've been told that um, a more question and answer format may be appropriate for this group as we're getting to things like selecting your measures um, and, and completing attestation so that we can wrap up the 2017 submissions. Um, so uh, our support hours are here for you, and then if you do um, have questions that you would like answer, you can always send them in advance. This will help us to address any common themes and make sure that we um, give you timely information. That's all I had. Uh, again, my name is Alicia Blakey. You can contact me personally at any time, but um, if your question is very complex or requires um, support from additional for additional registries, I do recommend that you contact our NRDR help desk. It's also our solution center where we have resources on checklists, timelines, templates, et cetera. You can always email us and then you can always phone us as well. Um, so I guess now we can go ahead and turn it, um, turn it over, I'll turn it over to Zach so we can monitor question and answer. I know that's a lot of content to cover. I only have an hour with you. I could talk for three hours. Um, but just know that we are close to finalizing this whole process. Everything must be done by March 2018, so you can be, rest be assured that January, February is going to be a really busy time for you as well as ACR staff to, to wrap up this final submission. Okay, so we've uh, got a easy question here from Michael uh, Lechner. He's asking, uh, fees are due by March 15th. When will the invoices be sent to the facility managers designated at registration? Michael, thanks for your question. The invoices for 2017 have not been released yet. We are planning to release them February, uh, March timeframe. We are changing or enhancing our invoicing process, and so everyone will be submitted invoices um, February, March. <laughs> Time frame, but you don't be alarmed. No one has submit has um, received their 2017 invoice yet. Uh, next question is from Darlene Claggett. 
she's asking, do all MIPS measures have different criteria for registry submission that is different from criteria for claims submission? Yes, that's a good question. With what CMS says is there are separate reporting instructions if you are a claims reporter and if you are a registry reporter. All of our documents, we um, link to our registry specifications. For the most part, they're, they're the same, but you do run into a few changes when you're reporting things like the incidental finding measures 405 and 406. There are some codes that are only available for claims reporting, and then for registry reporting, if it's not an incidentally found nodule, you wouldn't even report it through the registry. So there are some nuances there. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Danica Edwards. Um, Danica asks, will the performance reports in the MIPS portal provide anticipated points earned based on the measures we select? Uh, what you will see in the performance portal is the decile um, that your performance score puts you in. So it doesn't calculate your quality measure scores, but you will see which decile you are in. Yes, and so just a little bit of follow-up on that. So if you were in a decile six based on the benchmark in your performance, you could earn anywhere from six points to 6.1 points to all the way up to 6.9 points. So we want to stay away from calculating the points and give you more of a range. Thanks. Uh, next question is from Melissa Ray. Melissa is asking, uh, would you, you being us, uh, submit more than six quality measures in attempting to get bonus points, or are you picking the additional outcome or high priority ones as part of the six maximum measures? I think she's asking, would we, if, if they chose to submit more than six measures, would we submit more than six measures for them? Yes, if you select those, any measures you select and then uh, finalize a um, selection and attestation, we would submit those for you. So if you do select more than six and you have more than one outcome or high priority, then even if those measures weren't used for scoring because the performance scores were lower than another six measures, you would still get bonus points for those measures. So that's why it would make sense to submit more than, four, uh, more than six measures. Great. Thank you, Judy. That was Judy Burleson, mm -hmm. but I think you all know her voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question is from Courtney Carroll. Courtney's asking, will the admins be able to attest on behalf of physicians in 2018? That's a yes. That is a yes. Mm -hmm. We Currently, right now, we the admins can attest for the group reporters. Last year, if you use us, the admin was able to attest for group reporters. We're opening that so that admins can also attest for it if your doctors are doing individual reporting. Um, so we do realize that it could, the burden will shift from the doctors to the admin, but I think we heard loud and clear that the administrator is the person that should be selecting and attesting to the measures. We'll have language on the attestation page that specifically calls out that you have the authority to do that attestation. Just pay attention to that. So uh, next question is from Carolyn Packard. She's asking, can we still submit 2016 screening data to the NMD registry if we did not participate in 2016? That's also a yes. So yes, we're nodding our heads. Yes, you may uh, <laughs> submit any data retrospectively to any of the registries. Um, if you could do that by January 31st, and if you need more time, it's, we can always schedule. If you know that you're going to submit a lot of exams like that, we could maybe submit as a support ticket so that we can schedule something with our IT team so that they know a lot of data will be coming in at once. Okay, next question is from Shelly Gazarkowicz. She's asking, if I don't get everything submitted by January 31st, can I still submit after that date? <laughs> Hesitation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the goal is to have it in so that you can see your um, measure scores and select, have time to make any corrections that are needed to, uh, to be made or any issues that we under, that, uh, may be uncovered 
So we strongly, strongly encourage you to submit data by January 31st, but we realize that um, there's a lot to be done, so we're not going to cut things off at, on the 31st. Okay, we've got a question here from Doris Garcia. Doris is asking, in regards to quality reporting, I understand that the goal is to submit a minimum of six measures per provider. However, in order to maximize our quality score, can we, okay, that's, she's asking if she can submit more than six to get closer to the 60 point. That's what we addressed earlier. Well, sort of. So if you submit more than six measures, um, only six, the six, six highest scoring measure will be used. So the ones with the six highest performance scores, CMS won't use more than six measures to calculate to feed into your quality score. So it wouldn't up your um, your quality score towards the 60 point max other than getting bonus points for those additional measures. Uh, thank you. We've got a, another question here from R.A. Neitzel. R.A. is asking, if you have been submitting data to the LCSR for the past two years, will the ACR complete the reporting or do we have additional data submission requirements? I, I, if you've been submitting data for two years and you're getting measure scores in your feedback reports and your the facility aggregate reports, then you should have enough data for the measures to be calculated for us to submit to CMS. So I don't think there's anything additional. If there's measures that you're not getting scores for or if they're like a zero score, it may be because you don't have follow-up data um, for the initial exam. And if you don't have that, and this is the case for the NMD measures also, if you don't have that follow-up and outcome information, then we can't calculate some of the measures like cancer detection rate. So if your scores are zero, then you can submit them to, to CMS, but they won't use those for scoring your, doing the quality scoring other than, well, period won't get any scores, any credit for those. Thanks. Next question is uh, from Jen Staley. Jen's asking, when the physician is logged into their NRDR account, where do they go to register and attest for the first time? What link on the left specifically? They would need to go to the MIPS participation portal and then go to data collection and report. And that should take them straight to the attestation page. They just have to make sure they're logged into their their own physician user account. Yes, that's correct. That takes you to the participation portal, and there are a number of tabs in that portal, including the submission tab. Currently, there's a tab for CMS submission and GPRO CMS submission. Um, that's going to be modified shortly to just be one submission tab. And that's where the attestation information is. We just got a few questions left, and I'm hoping we can get through all of them. Um, next one is from Eric Lang, and Eric's asking, uh, some MIPS measures are all or none. For example, mammography reminder notifications. Is there any way to attest to this without uploading a file with all the exams? So, that would be impossible we would need your exam data yeah, unfortunately we do still need you to populate that that file with all the exams and that's a cms requirement mm -hmm. thanks um we've got a question from shelly again about the um uh the upload page under the mips portal she's asking what is considered an updated record what fields are used to determine that so i think she's asking if you upload a file and then re-upload the file and then it gives you a number of updated records. What does that mean? I think yeah, it's just, yeah, some of the fields that we use is like your exam unique ID, your patient's identif identification um, number is one of the fields. Um, there's about three or four 
fields that we use to make to make sure that we're not um, duplicating your your information for a measure or for a patient. So um, that's more of a behind the scenes, not something that you need to concern yourself with as you upload your MIPS data file. That's the turnaround is 24 hours. You'll see how many records were refreshed. That means that you submitted primarily some procedures that were for the same patient, but maybe for a different measure. So you have the actual record count on your MIPS, on your upload data page. Thank you. And uh, it looks like we've got one last question here from Melissa Ray. She's asking, once the physician has completed this initial attestation, is there anything else they'd need to do from their personal login? And that would be no, as long as they're doing GPRO and their facility administrator or registry administrator can finish everything else for them as far as the uh, attesting to improvement activities and selecting measures, then no. Yeah, that, that's correct. And I, I would just say for the majority for the QCR process, the facility administrator and registry administrator pretty much is managing the entire process with very little um, requirements for the physicians besides the MIPS portal registration. And we don't have any more questions. Okay. We've got one minute to go, so should we wrap up? I think that's... that's uh, thank you for those thought-provoking questions. Um, if you have others that have any concerns with your specific data related to your facility, you can always submit a support ticket to our help desk and our staff will uh, respond to you accordingly. We do ask that you also register for our office hours coming up in February and March. Um, and if you have a large group, we can also schedule separate office hours if you have a large team managing this uh, data submission process. We can do that also. Thank you for your time and your attention on a Thursday. Um, and continue to submit your data. Um, January 31st is your data submission deadline, and then we want you to select your measures um, by the end of February. So between January and February, go ahead and get your, uh, your information gathered for CMS submission. Thanks.